Hey guys, it's Mr. Veli, and we're on lesson 3.3, log bases and properties of logarithms. A uh, few things here, guys. Today in the video, you guys have your guided notes. When I have the pause symbol on the screen, and when I say pause, that means you actually need to physically pause the video and work on your guided notes, because I do have some examples that I want you guys to try out by yourself so you can check with me to see whether they're correct or not. All right, today we're going to go over when a uh, logarithm properties and log bases. So first off, when a log base is not written, so you saw that, you can encounter that in your homework today, you had log x or log 9 or log 3x. When you don't have a base written down, it's always going to be 10. So whenever it's not written down, we can just assume it's 10. So for example, over here in log x, that would just be log base 10 of x. Over here, that would be log base 10 of 9. And our, over here, that would be log base 10 of 3x. So if it's not written, then assume that it's 10. All right, let's go into the meat of the matter. This is properties of logs. So remember we discussed earlier that logarithms are inverses of exponential functions. So logarithms and exponentials are just inverses of each other, kind of like multiplication and division. And therefore, the properties of logarithms can be derived from the properties of exponents. Now, what do I mean by properties? Well, think of properties as uh, operation rules. So over here, I have three examples of exponents. And if you remember, if I had something like x squared times x cubed, what I would do is I would, if there's a multiplication happening, I have a common term x, I would take that multiplication and that would mean I would add my exponents. Similarly, if I had something like x to the sixth divided by x to the third, that's division, so I'd use the quotient property of exponents and I would subtract. So x to the 6 minus 3, I'd subtract and I get x to the 3rd. And then my last example with a power property, if I had something like x to the 3rd raised to the 3rd, I would multiply my exponents together and get 3 times 3, which is 9. Alright, so since they're inverses, their properties are derived from this one and the same. So a logarithm of a product is the same as the sum of the logs. So whenever we have a product of a log, we're going to be able to break it up into a sum of more logs. And you can take a sum of logs and you can put them together using the product property as well. So over here, it's not in your notes, but you need to write it down. I have a general kind of formula you guys can follow. So if you have log base b of xy, notice we can break that up. That, that's the same thing. We can write that same thing as log base b of x plus log base b of y. Notice that I kept the same bases, but all I did is I made it into two separate logs, and the way I was able to break them apart was through addition. So we can take that one log that was a product of x and y and broke it up into the sum of two logs. All right, let's try this one. This one is log base 3 of 4 times 7. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and I'm going to be like, well, I see that this is a product going on. There's multiplication happening there. And I can break it up into two separate logs. That's going to be log base 3 of 4. And remember, it's, it's the same thing as the sum. So plus log base 3 of 7. And notice I took the product of those logs and I made them into the sum. So I separated them out. I expanded them through addition. And if you want to think about it, it's the same thing as the exponent rule. Notice before, whenever I'd multiply two like terms with exponents together, I'd add the exponents. Same thing. This addition is going on. All right, let's try this one. This is the next one in your notes. It's log xyz. First off, you guys should know, if I don't write out my base, what is it? It's 10, that's right. So go ahead and write that 10 over there if you want to give you some uh, guidance. All right, now I'm going to break it up. I have log 
base 10 of xyz. xyz are all being multiplied by each other. So that's going to be log base 10 of x plus log base 10 of y plus log base 10 of z. And so notice that I took that product of x, y, z, and I broke it up into three separate logs because there's three separate multiplication problems going on there. So well, actually uh, two separate multiplication operations, and I was able to break each of those two up with an addition sign. All right. So right now, I want you to pause the video. I want you to pause the video, and I want you to try out examples three and four. And when you come back, I'll help you out with them. All right. So you should have paused the video and now we're resuming. Let's try this one. So you saw log base 4 of 3 times 5. So we know there's multiplication happening there. So that's going to be log base 4 of 3 plus log base 4 of 5. And that's what you should have gotten as your final answer. And the next one, log base 5 of hg. You're going to break that up into log base 5 of h plus log base 5 of g. All right. Now let's try this tricky one together. So in the prior examples, if you want to look back for a second, in the prior examples we had log of h times g and I would be breaking that up. In this next example I want to combine my logs. So I see addition going on here. So how could I possibly combine my logs together? Well, if all I see is addition going on, I know that the sum of these logs is the same thing as the property. Is I'm sorry, the same thing as the product. So over here I have a 10, and what's the 10? It's being added to another log. So this addition should be coded in my mind for multiplication. And then I have this x, and that's being added again to the 7. So again, addition, multiplication. So I can combine all of these logs actually into one log because they all have the same base and that's very important. They all need to have the same base which is the base of 6 in this case. So this would be log base 6. Now I'm going to start from right to left because I know my order of operations start from right to left. It's going to be log base 6 of 10 x times 7. Notice there's all addition happening in both places, so I know that there's going to be multiplication happening. And this is not a multiplication uh, sign, guys. This is the x. All right, and I can simplify that even further if I actually wanted to. And this could be log base 6 of 70x. So notice I had two separate addition, and instead of expanding this into more logs, I condensed it, and I made it into one log. So... I want you guys to pause the video, try number and try number six, and I'll look at that one later. All right, you should have paused the video, and we're back. Uh, I'll go over that last problem tomorrow uh, to double check that you guys have done your work. We're going to try the quotient property now. So we've done the product property. The quotient property is the logarithm of a quotient is the same as the difference of the logs same as the difference. So we know from our uh, the language of mathematics that difference means subtraction. So if you want to copy this next equation down, that's log base b of x divided by y equals log base b of x minus log base b of y. And this division sign right here was a good cue for me. It kind of told me, hey, I'm going to be subtracting. So make sure we realize that, that that division sign is going to tell us to subtract two logs. So much in the same way we did product property, we're going to do this one. So I have log base 4 of x divided by y. And this should be on your guide notes worksheet. I'm going to break this up, kind of like I did that division problem. And I'm going to break it up into log base 4 of x minus log base 4 of y. And notice just like the product rule I broke it up and I used subtraction to break it up because if you remember the rule the quotient of the logs uh, you're gonna find the difference of them. Alright let's try this one. 
it's log base 2, 4x divided by 10. Same thing, let's break it up. Log base 2, I keep that base of 4x minus log base 2 of 10. All right. And in fact, if I wanted to break this down even further, guys, you could break this down even further. So taking an extra step, I noticed that this 4 and this x are being multiplied by each other. So I could actually go ahead and maybe even do this. I could do log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of x minus log base 2 of 10. And notice that's because I noticed that there was multiplication going on there. So if I were to fully expand, I could actually do that. All right, so you guys try example three and four, pause the video, it shouldn't take you long, and then hit this back when you're done. All right, so one of your problems was this, and we can actually separate this by the difference. And hopefully by now you guys have kind of gotten the pattern. All right, let's move on to that second one that you guys had to do. And let's see, let's do log base 8 of 3x minus log of y. And then I'm noticing that, hey, look, there's multiplication happening, so I'm going to use a product property now. So log base 8 of 3 plus log base 8 of x minus log base 8 of y. And I should have put a base 8 right here too, guys. All right, let's move on to this new one. All right, so again, before we were expanding, now we're going to be condensing, meaning we're going to make it smaller. We're going to combine these logs. How do we combine these logs? Well, I see a subtraction sign. I know that the difference of these two logs is going to be their quotient. So this is going to be log base 4 of 10 over x. And you could do 10 divided by x, 10 over x. Remember, these two things mean the same thing. All right, go ahead and try example six by yourself. Pause the video and go ahead and try example six. All right. So let's try this one out. Um, you guys should have done this. You see log base two. So we're going to combine, and this should be simply that. So pretty easy if you got the pattern. All right, exponent property is our last property. So there's been three properties we've really gone over. We've gone over product, we've gone over difference, and this is our exponent property. So this is our last property. The logarithm of a power is the same as a product of two logs. So this is the same as the product of two logs. Just like when we had x to the third raised to the third, we multiplied those exponents together. That's what we're doing here. But we're going to bring that out in front. So we're going to be multiplying the entire log by that property. So go ahead and copy this down in your notes right here. And that is log base b of x to the y equals y times log base b of x. Notice I brought that y and I brought it in front. That's the same thing as multiplying. What I'm doing is I'm taking that exponent and I'm multiplying it by the log. All right, so for this one, we have log base 5 of x raised to the fourth. I'm going to bring that 4 out in front to be multiplied by the log, and that's going to be my final answer. So notice I just brought this out in front. All right, now I notice a few things going on here. So before you rush to a conclusion, notice that I have log base 3 of m squared times n cubed. Times, there's multiplication going on here. So first, let's use our product rule, okay? So first we're going to use our product rule to separate these two guys out. All right, so you should get something like that. It should be log base 3 of m squared plus log base 3 of n cubed. Now use that exponent property to bring these two things forward to be multiplied. So it would be 2 log base 3 of m plus 3 log base 3 of n. Notice how first I did my product property 
in between them, and then after I split them up, I brought their exponents over to be multiplied. All right, go ahead and try examples three and four. Three and four, they aren't that bad, guys. All right, after you pause the video, you should see this one. Uh, we're going to bring that three out in front, actually. So it's going to be log base two. Could get that three over there of y. Because we're multiplying. And then in this one, well, it seems like this one is the same. Go ahead and try out. I believe this was log base 3 of a squared b to the fourth. That's going to be 2 log base 3 of a plus 3, no, no, I'm sorry, plus 4 log base 3 of b. All right, same thing. Remember before we had uh, things going on, we had to condense. So we're going to condense here. So notice that I see this thing right here, this thing right here, and this thing. There's nothing being multiplied over here. Bring that up. So log of x. Remember the base would automatically be 10. I'm going to bring that 5 up there. Bring that 7 up here. and then subtracting that log. But I'm not done. I want to condense fully. What do I do? Well, there's addition happening here. There's addition. I know that we're going to be finding the product of the two. So I can just go ahead and combine these two logs. And there's one, one other thing happening. Subtraction is happening. Right here, subtraction is happening. So I know that I need to divide. So my final answer is going to actually come out to be log x to the fifth, y to the seventh, divided by four. All right, so I combine a few different steps. All right, so go ahead and try example six, and I'll check example six in class. All right, and our last slide is putting it all together. So we already know that when we have all these different rules, we can combine them. So let's look at an example. All right, so say I have a problem like this. And this over here, I want to solve for x. I'm going to try to solve for x. So if I have log base 3 of 5 minus log base 3 of x equals log base 3 of 10, first I'm going to look at this. How can I condense them? Well, I have a subtraction sign over here, so I'm going to combine these two things. So that's going to turn into log base 3 of 5 divided by x equals log base 3 of 10. And remember what I told you, that rule earlier, how today we talked about if you had two logs and they're on separate sides of the equal sign, you could do what? Cancel them out. So now I'm left with 5 divided by x equals 10. Just solve for x, so multiplying x on both sides. I'm going to get 5 equals 10x, and then I'm going to divide 10 on both sides, and that's going to yield me 1 half equals x. So I combine some of my properties there in order to get the correct answer. Go ahead and try examples 2, 3, and 4. And then we'll come back together, and I'll check them for your warm-up tomorrow. All right, so you have just three of them to finish up, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day, guys.